Yeah, if you're lucky. That's where you have to have something that will re-encode it to a lower bit rate before it sends out of your house. So what and that's you where I was talking about Plex media server. Uh, Plex will re-encode it before it leaves your house. So what you need to do is move to a place like Austin, Texas, where they have the gigabyte uh, internet access. Yeah. I mean, because there's also, I mean, it, it doesn't do movies that I know of. I haven't played with it, but I use uh, an application called Subsonic, and I put all my MP3s on that machine that I run my Subsonic server on, and then from anywhere that I'm at, as long as I have access to internet connection, I can browse to my URL and I'll have access to my entire MP3 collection anywhere I go. Um, but I don't think it does movies. At least know. I haven't played with it. Oh, it does? It does do movies. Okay. Huh? I have had issues with it uh, re encoding them. So, and me just, because disk space is so cheap whenever I rip a movie or MP3s, I do it at the highest bit rate anyway. So. It's it's more more for internally uh, rather than skimp on the quality of the show. You know, well, so eventually we'll all have our own little library of things that we're interested in listening to and watching and stuff. The whole idea of somebody feeding you what they want to feed you when they want to might go away with the technology that's available even now. Yeah, I mean it's there's I don't know at least in my opinion that there, there are always going to be services like that and. A lot of the general public will use them. Um, me personally, growing up in high school and everything else, I spent more time as a DJ than anything else. So I listen to what I want to listen to, when I want to listen to. It's rare I listen to the radio, anything other than NPR. So. You're yeah. NPR. Oh. Yeah. You want to <laughs> hit the yeah. plates? So, and then like I. Oh, oh sorry. Yeah. <laughs> This is the keyboard that I have. Um, it's just a small USB uh, dongle that fits into the Raspberry Pi. It's got your touchpad over here with your on and off buttons. Um, all the PC buttons pretty much don't apply on the Raspberry Pi. Um, but I, I went with this route. That way I can maneuver. And it's one of the smallest ones that I found that I wasn't just typing with my thumbs. So I just leave this sit on the bottom shelf of the coffee table, and whenever we turn it on. What's the effect of range? I've never, I don't know, I've never hit a place where I can't use it. If you don't, if you don't want a full keyboard, they, you can get remotes. Most remotes work with XBMC, um, and so like this one is a wireless remote. That it, again, it just has a little USB dongle that sits on your thing. That's far enough. And what's nice about this one is it, it looks like a regular remote. On the back of it is a full keyboard. So then if you want to type to search for something, um, and with this one, it's actually a wireless mouse too. So you can just wave your hand and then the mouse walk, flies around the screen. And, uh, I don't know. Oh, okay. It, it, I think I called it some Japan knockoff or Chinese knockoff <laughs> on Amazon. I, I think I paid 18 bucks for it. What you mentioned about the media server, you know, recently or was coming out is they sell at, originally was at the high price store, now it's at Best Buy, Sonos. They have speakers, you buy it for like $200, and you put on the web, you know, you can play music independent in each room. Well, uh -huh. this gets actually substitute for that. You get this on your land. You can have one of these in each room and independently control your music there. Yeah. With the Sonos, you have to distribute to their... Exactly. And you can go independent of that. Now, you can have it all with the, with the map speed that you talked about. Locally in your land without going to the internet and all that stuff. So yeah. I and like and if, you're, you know, if, if you're running stuff that you know, it's just not moving fast enough on the wireless, you know, you've got your network port, so right. you can just, you know, hide it somewhere discreet, mm -hmm. run a cable to it, and a lot of times now, nowadays, the the wire, uh, the wired routers that they sell for your house, you're running gigabit land within your house. Mm -hmm. you, know, right. so. you can even mount them to the back of your TV. Like you could get double sided tape or Velcro, or yeah. you can even get mm -hmm. mounts that will yeah. spit right into the back of your TV. Great. You can get that off Amazon. You got this off Amazon, it's a couple bucks. Um, this one's actually broken because this is the pie that the kids used to play okay. games. So they knocked it off mm -hmm. and snapped off the corners. But it had brackets like this on all four corners. And these okay. screwed directly into the back of the TV. 
Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see. It. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's just called Pi Mound. Just search Pi Mound. Yeah. Well, I'll also mention another concept I've seen that's uh, interesting, although it's kind of a niche kind of thing, is take a Raspberry Pi and, you know, put all kinds of things on it. I've seen a lot of people putting, like, 3D printing uh, whatevers to, to work with this. And 3D printing is a big, fancy new way of, of basically making small, uh, inexpensive parts. Uh, one of the projects is a 3D printed laptop with a Raspberry Pi as the guts. So you basically get a you know keyboard and a, a, an LED uh, type display, and it all packages like a laptop. Um, well, right now the Raspberry Pi is kind of a low-powered you know laptop. It wouldn't be a real you know spiffy, speedy type of solution. But now you have everything. If something breaks, you can just 3D print the replacement part. What do you want? You want the new? Yeah, that's, that's the Pi top. Oh, that's the Pi top. Yeah, yeah. They're a little expensive. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. For okay. what the, you get, you can probably buy a new laptop. You know. yeah. oh. But basically, uh, that's that's kind of in the maker space too, because I believe they don't send you a finished. Product. No, they send you the parts with the instructions. So you get you know, the win of building it yourself as well. Uh, let me turn it down. Are there any recommended resources like a book or a website or something that you guys go to? Uh, tons of stuff. I mean, it's, it's if you go to Barnes and Noble uh -huh. in their computer section, you will find at least three different magazines. So, uh, <laughs> so you just notes the and notes on very high. Like one, one they had was fifty projects, fifty pie projects. Uh, they had the pie enthusiast. Mm -hmm. So there is definitely uh, uh, magazines out there with dedicated towards the pie enthusiast. And if you're looking for <coughs> guided tours with the folks, the, uh, the Baker Shed, they sell the getting started with Raspberry Pi. Um, they sell the whole kit, which you get the pie, the case for the pie, uh, memory card, power uh, cable, and, and the book that they put out. You know, Here's how you can install. Here are some things you can do. Here's how you can navigate. And of course, you have the web. Yeah. <laughs> There's, for both... Facebook and Google Plus, there's uh, Raspberry Pi groups, and everybody's posting their project that they just did, or here's a link to another project that's cool. And, um, and there are lists of lists, and you know, just. Yeah, yeah all sorts of uh, blog or news sites will have their Raspberry Pi section or whatever. Um, yeah, so it's always, it's just do some Googling and it's all out there. Yeah, and if you have one in mind, like just a general project, like I wanted to do with a thermostat and I googled that and like five different projects came up of different ways to do it um, there's also one that I'm going to do it's just I, I uh, haven't gotten to the or bought my other bread the next one I, it's a uh, internet radio system and you can uh, you can mount that inside an old radio and then uh, you get you, and you have to buy the old display and buttons and stuff, and you, and you cut open the front of the radio and stuff. So you can tune into regular radio, but then you go over to the auxiliary input, and it'll play anything off the internet that you're tuning into. So it, it's cool stuff. So I have you know, another idea that I haven't quite had a chance to pursue yet, and I think it might be fun, is to get VR glasses. Virtual reality glasses say that you can, you know, basically it's like having a 50-inch a TV on the other side of the room and all that. So I'm just thinking, just what kind of quality do you get on that? Could you use that as a replacement for your desktop display? Uh, you know, obviously, watch movies and things like that. Or that um, so you know, one, one of the things is, how, how portable can I make this? Can I put everything in a pocket <coughs> kind of thing? So right now, I have my little power unit that I showed you a couple times. I have the Raspberry Pi with all the little inputs and stuff like that. There's small keyboards that like that. The one thing I'm hung up on is the display. So I go to like... Uh, um, you know, the, the hardware store or whatever and, and get something from uh, Micro Center for 50, 60 bucks that would be a seven inch display and stuff. Well, that's not really something I could put in my pocket, you know. So that's the only thing that right now it's holding me back from having one carry around with me all the time. So nobody's tried that yet? The VR glasses with the Raspberry Pi? I did see a project of someone that set up a projector to the Raspberry Pi. That would be another cool and one. And right? was able to project the keyboard and everything on a wall and yep. read 
Yeah, well, I've seen the, the projected keyboards too, right? So yeah. that would be pretty cool with the Raspberry Pi. Um, it was a project where it projected the screen and the keyboard yeah. and was able to yeah. manipulate. So then you get into like yeah. gesturings and finger movements and stuff like that. That's that's gonna be you know, I don't know the Minority Report kind of thing with uh, you know that movie. Yeah. So do you mean like the Google glasses or like the Oculus? Right. Yes. Yeah, so something like that. There and there's a lot of those out there now. I mean you see them for a hundred dollars now. You know I don't know how good they are. Is the point. So anybody else have something they want to present? Okay. Well, so I'm intending to go for another 25 minutes official meeting time. And then we'll go out to lunch if anybody's interested. Um, so two o'clock is, you know, I th I thought we'd, you know, we would just run out of things to talk about at some point, but um, <laughs> I'm kind of surprised when we are because there's so many people with, you know, an interest in this. So do you want to continue on with this and I mean, just general discussion about Raspberry Pi? Sure. That all sound good. Okay. I so guess I have one quick question that fits into that, and this is more of a question. So, I'm interested in doing like non-profit and educational stuff and then do it like overseas in sort of third world countries sometimes, as you know. And, uh, so, is it uh, from a Linux point of view or a network point of view, can you have like two, three of these Raspberry Pis uh, that would be like your web server, your many different servers where you just take three devices with me and I go over there and I'm presenting to people and I have actually my network. On these yeah. two devices, yes. Along with just the so uh, data center, you know, in a in a, uh, in a box. Yes, that's the concept, right? So yes, I, you know, basically I took a shoe box and threw some, you know, this equipment in there, right? I could have my little power thing, the, the Raspberry Pi, a couple, you know, USB dongles and things like that, and network them together with Wi-Fi if I want to do Wi-Fi or hardware them. So yeah, very very conceivable that you could build an entire data center and just carry it with you. And now going through, you know. The, say and yeah. it might be a little bit of a problem to say what is this a bomb or all that yeah. type of thing I remember once I had my little USB key on my on my uh, keychain right and you all seen those little thumb drive things right so I have one that looked like this and the TSA agent said what's that you know he wanted to know what this thing was because he thought it was some kind of knife or you know some, uh, so I'd, I'd be real careful about how you how you present that in a way that you know isn't going to get you 